another edition of Planetary Calendar, your astrological guide for July 2014. We're here today with Carol Cherry, the publisher of Planetary Calendar. And Lonnie D'Amicus, one of the authors of Planetary Calendar. Thank you. Thank you. What you got, Carol? Well, you know, we had such a nice month last month. We all got a little bit of rest, Mercury retrograde, made sure that not much got done. And now this month, Mercury is going to be in three different signs. So it's going to be full tilt to go-go this month. I think it turns direct on the 1st, which is a great start for yes. the month right there. A lot of people will be having a little party and cheering and just happy to see some forward progress. Yes, indeed. July always starts with a party in the northern in North America as we have Canada Day on the 1st and of course American Independence Day on the 4th this week or this year. It's going to be a Friday. So that sounds like a good 3-day weekend for sure. We'll start off on the 4th with the uh, 4th of July weekend, by then we will have the moon in Libra. So again, look at that relationship focus, it seems so often this year. Relationships are very, very focused on. This is the year of relationships. And Venus, I think in the forecast, there was a lot made of the fact that Venus was going to be a big player this year and next year, I think. Well, and with Mars and Libra for such a long time, you know, I mean, it really is trying to bring home the age of Aquarius message that we are all divinely connected. In fact, rules and relationships is often what I think of as the, the meaning of life, you know, 42, the rules and relationships. We're here to relate to everybody else and ourselves and our things, you know, our finances, our food, you know, whatever, all the things that we do, it's all relationships. And it's always trying to figure out the balance between me and you, you know, mm -hmm. what I want, what we want. Together we can do more. I mm -hmm. mean, when we talk about relationships, a lot of times people think about just one-on-one -on -one relationships, but we relate to so many people in so many ways throughout the world. And, mm -hmm. of course, things like Facebook and Twitter and all the social media has really expanded the way that people relate to people these days. It's true, and the relationship we have with money and the relationship we have with food and our business relationships, personal relationships, romantic relationships. I mean, and there's... and. As we're changing and adjusting to the age of Aquarius, you know, of course our relationships and the way that we relate is, is, is going to change with that message of we are all divinely connected. I think you're seeing that a lot in the politics right now, too. You know, as people really want, everybody wants to be heard, everybody wants to feel like they're safe and taken care of, you know. And, and it's, it's true, we are all divinely protective and only as strong as our weakest link, really. And with all of these retrogrades, there's something about retrogrades that are kind of Venusian or you know, self-introspection anyway, which is also about, and our relationships have really undergone a lot of real scrutiny from within, mm -hmm. you know, so we're constantly redefining that by looking inward. And it's nice that these retrograde periods give us a chance to turn that in and so that we can really kind of decide and create new ways to relate to people in the world. I agree. Particularly this year, we and next year, we and last year, we have the Pluto Uranus square, and uh, you know that is really talking about bringing out our strongest desires and personal change, and how those two things kind of crash into one another in many ways, and need to have a, a work, a reconcile, a way to work that out. You know, and so yes, very very strong focus. This month is going to have a lot of changes. Like we said, Mercury is going to be in three different signs during the course of this month. We're going to have Uranus turning retrograde on July 21st. We're going to have Mars finally leaving Libra. <laughs> And moving into Scorpio on Friday the 25th. Well, Mars, Libra isn't a sign that Mars does particularly well. You know, Mars likes to run with scissors and Libra likes to weigh every possibility and mm -hmm. check out every angle and everything. So it's been a little bit difficult for Mars to be in Libra, let alone the people who have Mars prominent in their chart or mm -hmm. live with people who have Mars or Libra prominent mm -hmm. in their chart. So uh, it's it's kind of a good thing that it's finally going to move off. Well, and, and Mars so often is thought of as the planet of me and Libra the sign of we. And so there is a definite disconnect there. But Scorpio knows exactly what she wants. <laughs> so. 
<laughs> so I think our energy is going to be freed up a little bit. Although, I mean, Scorpio is sort of famous for clandestine, you know, so there might be some behind the scenes going on for the month while Mars is in, month or so, while well, Mars is in Scorpio. Scorpio might have a bad rap about being clandestine. It's powerful, and it's not afraid to tell you what it really thinks. And of course, Mars is the ruler of Scorpio. You know, in modern rulerships, they call Pluto the ruler of Scorpio, but actually in ancient traditional rulerships, it is Mars. And there are many astrologers who feel that that is much better fit. These outer planets are not really rulers of these personal signs. Mm -hmm. um, so Mars is powerful. And uh, they, in order to keep their power, they may be very good at keeping secrets, but they're not necessarily trying to, you know, obscure something. They're just holding their cards pretty close to the vest. That's a good time to get that, make that transition. Right. Well, and speaking of Leo, Jupiter is about to start his year in Leo. That'll happen on Wednesday, July 16th. Jupiter spends about uh, 12, maybe 13 months or so in each sign. And when Jupiter is in your sun sign, that's generally uh, a good lucky year. You know, a lot of expansion. That's what Jupiter does. Expands, grows, learns. It's out there and gets bigger. It's lucky. Uh, so it could, it's very often considered to be lucky for the Jupiter to be in your sun zone. So Generous. There you go. Gregarious. Leo. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be Leo's turn to have Jupiter's benevolent light shining on them. And that's exciting. And we'll have the sun moving in to Leo on the 22nd, which is a Tuesday. And by then, we're going to have some other things getting ready to move into there. Mercury, of course, into Leo on the 31st. And uh, a lot of the personal planets will be following, you know, the personal planets. And when I say that, I mean Mercury and Mars and Venus. And Venus. They're generally not too far from, from where the sun is. Well, which is easy to say, but of course, Mars has been in Libra, which is quite far from. <laughs> Mars goes farther, Capricorn, but Mercury yeah. and Venus stay within two signs of mm -hmm. Mercury with one, one sign on either side of the sun and Venus within two. So... Uh, they're, they're always pretty closely related to what your sun position is. And that's great. It keeps us in sync. You know, I mean, when we have our mind on one thing and our emotions on another, or, well, the moon goes around all the way. When we have our mind on one thing and our self in another focus, self -interest it, it would Venus. be a little yeah. bit of a conflict, you know, so they all have to kind of be near one another so that we can you know, be sane, you know, and not have our heart and our head in two different spots. You they know, sort of speak. make up the triumvirate of your, you know, your daily life, right? so to speak. The way you communicate, the way you feel about yourself and your needs and, mm -hmm. and the way your emotional nature contributes to your ego. So that sun, moon, Mercury, Venus, all right. are things that we feel very personally, very daily we use that all in our lives. Of course, the Mars as well in terms of our energies. But our energy cycles can change a lot. You mm -hmm. know, you go through periods of time where you just feel low energy or, you know, you need a little boost or something like that. Maybe Mars is in a sign that doesn't really support your natal Mars that well. And so that can be a challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah um, Mercury went direct. Well, we'll go direct on July 1st. And... It's changing signs, like I say, it's going to be in three different signs this month. And it, at, when Mercury is moving so fast, projects really do tend to move ahead. And with the, the low month we had last month, that's going to feel really great for people to be able to move ahead on their projects and get some of their things done before we hit sleepy August. You know, So don't waste this month. You definitely want to get ahead on your projects and, and pay attention to you know, the things that need to get done in our area, of course, kids are going back to school the end of August, you know, so there's, there's still a lot of things to get done, you know, to manage the family scene. And it's hard to get, you know, time to get your work projects done or other kinds of things done. So the energy that this month with that fast moving Mercury should help a lot. Well, and it's interesting, there's only one white circle day on the month. And there are no black box days Excellent. on the month. But I'd like to talk about that white circle day for a minute because you were talking about speedy Mercury. And you mm -hmm. want Mercury to be pretty quick. I mm -hmm. mean, that's always a plus, always a benefit. 
Mercury isn't indicated in the parameters of this white circle day, but because of its speed, he brings his energy, lends his positive energy to make that white circle and other just highlighting it as a day to start something new, especially mm -hmm. having come off the retrograde, uh, just about being out of the shadow, moving quickly. And then you've got the other highlights of that white circle day being the moon in Aquarius and Uranus, its modern ruler, being well aspected by him. So you can think of things with communication both near and far because mm -hmm. Uranus and Aquarius are communication related also but through technology mm -hmm. whereas Mercury might be the mail or short emails or smaller things. And then of course you've got that nice Venus Mars trine. We've been talking about that you know, that nice aspect, that nice relationship between Mars and Venus for a while now. Mm -hmm. And so it's really a good day for something in uh, uh, communication, as I said, or useful for uh, something involving the Internet, uh, bringing men and women together mm -hmm. or bringing issues of both Venus and Mars in terms of food, energy, health, those kinds of things be a right. great day to start something like that. Right. You know, Neptune is, is pretty close in that uh, Mars-Venus trine as well. In fact, uh, Venus and Neptune will be exactly trined on the 24th. And, you know, Neptune always brings that creativity as well, that inspiration, that element of spirit, you know, which is, is very, very nice. I also want to mention, too, that Saturn is going direct on the 20th of July. And that day has got Taurus, in, uh, this is the moon in Taurus. And, and I always feel like businesses that are started when uh, Jupiter is retrograde can be very personally satisfying, but not as, as successful in, in, in a traditional successful business way. I mean, it can be great satisfying work and that's awesome. But for a money maker, you'd really like it to be uh, Saturn direct. Would you agree with and that? And you had said Jupiter, but I knew oh, you I'm meant sorry. Saturn. Yes. So yes. we'll correct that for the audience to uh -huh. say that when, when Saturn is retrograde at the beginning of an endeavor, it has the effect that you talked about, and it, it's much more positive when it is direct. Exactly. So Because Saturn is the structure of something. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you might have a great idea during a Neptune retrograde or something like that, mm -hmm. but if you want it to take form and actually make you money or accomplish something or come to reality, bricks and mortar or something like that, you really want Saturn to be involved and you want it to be forward motion. Yeah, but I think this is a great time though because, I mean, when Saturn is retrograde, um, you can be thinking about it and, and getting the plan together and working out what your responsibilities are and what you are able to do and how the thing will work. And then once Saturn goes direct, that's the time to start moving ahead by that URL. You know, start submitting uh, loan applications or whatever it is that you need to really get that business going. Often they say that uh, things in our, in our foundation and structure uh, can break down while Saturn is retrograde. And it's funny because back in uh, the beginning of March when Saturn first went retrograde, in Sonoma, we lost power, not, not once, but twice on the weekend where, where Saturn went retrograde. And, and talk about foundation and structure. I mean, something that you absolutely need your electricity, you know, for that to break down right away, you know, is really kind of telling. So I think that that kind of stuff happens more often uh, during the times when it changes. So we might look and see uh, the week before, the week after on that 20th even, that uh, Saturn turning direct may affect us. And the date that the signs that change their direction or station, Ralph is fond of saying they cause a lot of turbulence. Mm -hmm. And so although we're happy when a planet goes direct, you may even want to wait a day or so until it starts to really make mm -hmm. forward motion mm -hmm. or you calm down that turbulence. And in this case, on the 21st, you've got turbulence followed by turbulence because that's the day that Uranus goes retrograde. Mm -hmm. And if that's not a day where you could wonder if your power would go out, I don't know what is. You you know, know, you're or right. computers could uh, you know, go down. Your internet provider might be out for a little while or something like that right. because of that 
that turbulence, as Ralph likes to say. I agree. And then the next day, the 22nd, the sun is moving into Leo. And then the 25th is when Mars moves into Scorpio. And then follow that is the new moon on the 26th. So if you are looking at starting a business venture, uh, I would even think the beginning of August would be a good idea because by then, you know, we even have Mercury entering into Leo on the 31st. And Leo is brave, c courageous, out there, you know, hard on the sleeve, ready to go, especially Especially if you've got uh, a business that is a personal business, you know, helping children, helping people, you know, something that people can get their heart into, you know, would be a wonderful thing to be starting in the beginning of August. So that makes July time prep time, you know, and using that freshly direct mercury to get all of your ships in a row, all your ducks in a row right. and make it happen. And all that, as I said, turbulence, you know, it's mm -hmm. an exciting time and it's all building up to that energy. And then once it sort of peaks and then you can take a breath in and then you can really focus your energy and, mm -hmm. and put the shoulder to the wheel. Yeah, besides our uh, two patriotic holidays that we already mentioned, we also have Bastille Day happening on the 14th, my favorite French holiday. And we have uh, Mormon holiday on the 24th, Pioneer Day. And then at the last week of the month, we have the Delta Aquarian Meteor Showers. And if you come to our website and connect with us on Facebook, we uh, generally try to provide information on where to look, which direction, and what time of day to be able to get the best view for the upcoming meteor showers. So please check us out at planetarycalendar.com. Sometimes they try to uh, upstage the 4th of July fireworks, don't they? Sometimes, sometimes. They're very fun. They're very fun. The, I always enjoy them. The real big show, meteor shower, at least speaking, happens next month. Yeah. Because August we have the Perseid meteor showers yeah. coming up. And that's going to be on August 12th and 13th. And that is far and away the most active, the most popular, the most uh, viewed meteor showers exactly. of them all. So exactly. this is sort of a appetizer. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. I like month. that. I like that. Uh, you know, that Uranus turning retrograde is so important. Let's go back and read some of what Ralph wrote in our monthly forecast for the month of July. On the 21st, Uranus and Aries turns retrograde. This planet suffers from contrariness. It doesn't react the way other planets do. All we can say for sure is that the revolution in individual consciousness that Uranus is stimulating is going to get a kick in the pants. That's so important. We have Uranus in the earliest degrees of Aries, really inspiring self-change. And so many people that I talk to are really working with trying to be new, trying to get rid of old habits, trying to react differently, you know, trying to think before they speak, trying to, you know, wait an hour before responding to the email. I mean, just subtle ways to be a little bit different. And to, for it to be going retrograde, further turns that energy inward. So when we say another kick in the pants, it's going to get another amp up, another level, you know, for us to be once again looking into our own heads and the way that we respond, the way that we behave, the way that our habits go, and again asking us to kind of grow up in a way, you know, and to get rid of behaviors and things that don't serve us anymore. And, and that's so important with all of the work that we've been doing this year. I, in my mind, we're all working really towards the eclipse that's happening in October. Um, you know, we just had the one in, in April, and that's sort of the precursor. But the one that's happening in October is really what we're working for. And we're, we're getting our relationships in order, getting our businesses in order, getting our own selves in order, taking better care of ourselves, you know, and, and getting our, our head right, you know, so that we are, are ready to receive the rewards that the eclipse could bring come October. You know, those of us who are, are not so interested in, in self-growth or are, are not so interested in making the changes or even just resentful that they have to change. You know, again, they're the ones who are struggling and having the hardest times. Those of us who are willing can just be tiny little baby steps <laughs> one day at a time. Just try each time to remember that newness and trying to embrace what we're trying to be, which is who we came here to be in the first place in many, in many ways. It's, it's really so interesting and so exciting to see. I think Uranus is a tremendously important planet because there are many people who think a common definition of insanity is doing 
the same things and expecting different results. But one of my definitions of insanity is trying to think, trying to not change in the world because the imperative is for us to change and grow every single minute of every single day. And all the motions of the planets really underscore that by their motion and by the way they interact with each other constantly. The moment you were born, the next moment the planets were somewhere else and thus started your first transit. And these transits are transmissions of information to you constantly like like big radio telescopes in this in the heavens but they're bigger and they're more powerful and they're mm -hmm. constantly sending you messages and energy and all of those inputs are meant to change you so that it is almost harder and definitely more insanity making to try to stay the same when mm -hmm. everything is telling you to change and so as we have these Thank goodness we have these retrograde motions because when they go retrograde, they give us a chance to catch up. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, we're supposed to change this. Now we're supposed to change that. Now we're supposed to learn this. Now I'm supposed to be here. Now this is coming. And then you have this retrograde and you say, okay, now how do I integrate that with all the other stuff that I had before? Mm -hmm. So I think Uranus, because it is so active and is all about what your possibilities are, Saturn is what your responsibilities are, but Uranus is your possibilities. Mm -hmm. And what better underlayment for change than that? I agree with you 100%. And I think it's wonderful that our new moon this month is going to be a little bit earlier in the month. Our new moon happens on July 26th, which means that last week of the month is not going to be the energy drag that it has been for the last couple of, of, of months when we have that new moon in the last few days. I don't know about you, but I know I certainly feel, you know, that as soon as I see the third quarter moon comes, I'm tired. I mean, my energy just goes down. But it's nice to be able to have it a little earlier in the month so we can have five days, you know, of the energy building while we're still here in July. Because August oftentimes is 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 a vacation month, you know. I mean, in, in Europe, oftentimes it seems like the whole town is shut down in some spots, you know, as everybody goes on vacation. Whole countries. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And August, we had talked about, is a great time for a romantic getaway. So a lot of... The stuff that's going to get done this summer is going to happen this month in July. You know, certainly for us, many of us will have our kids going back to school the end of August uh, as the sun reaches Virgo, which is great in the way that it should be. But, uh, you know, there's still work to be done, too. <laughs> so that powerful new moon on the 26th in July really sets the tone for August. Right. And with that uh, Mars and Venus and Neptune trine going on, uh, there's a great chance for romance, you know, and that I believe also sets the tone for August and one of the reasons why we're suggesting romantic getaway for, for that time. Remember when Neptune is involved, there's creativity, there's spirit, there's inspiration, you know, and that is a lovely kind of romance. So with that, we will say goodbye and wish you a wonderful July and we'll catch up with you in August. See you then.